Right, so let's go ahead and create a new project right from the get go. I'm going to call this uh, croc, croc attack. Um, and put this in my D, oops, D drive. And let's see, well, I'll leave them as, as they are, doesn't matter. Okay, click accept and then save that. Okay, in hip and then find find that project. And let's give it the same name. Uh, croc tech version one dot hip. Good to go. And I'm just gonna get rid of this um, origin norm one in the middle. I don't it's a bit distracting. So what I want to do for the first um, lesson here is just a very quick overview of some of the some of the possibilities with Vellum. Okay, so I'm just going to drop a geo here. I'm just going to throw together some random um, kind of bits and bobs with Vellum. Okay, so let's call this uh, Vellum intro jump inside okay I'm just gonna drop a grid right off the get go okay and then typically vellum likes to work with uh, triangles you know well you just kind of get better um, folds and things with triangles so I'm gonna drop a remesh to give me some nice triangles and you know some something that's less uh, uniform in the you know it's not kind of all the same so we get something a bit more interesting and then so literally two nodes there and then a vellum configure cloth okay if you haven't used um, this workflow before I think the RBD workflow is kind of similar it can be look a bit weird if you haven't done it before I think yeah, the, <clears throat> excuse me RBD I don't know yeah see they, they use the same kind of three input three outputs system so basically on the on the left you've got your geometry the the you know whatever you're trying to simulate in the middle these pink parts are the constraints and then on the right will be um, your collision object which you can see if you hover over the top okay now the yeah the geometry will be polygons um, or grains okay uh, which will be points and then the constraints will be uh, primitive lines. Okay, so you can see here that's what we're generating here. So if I if we come here, I think we can visualize actually just yeah. If you can if you uh, go to the information box here, and we can hit uh, constraint geometry, and then we're looking at the information for the constraint geometry here. So you can see we're generating seventeen thousand primitives. Um, and we've got some attributes on them. We've got um, compression stiffness, sti uh, stiffness, which will be bent stiffness, I think, type. So let's take a closer look at them. If we go up into the geometry spreadsheet, you can see we've got yeah, all these different attributes. We've got a mass, which is varying between them all. We've got a P scale, which is basically the thickness of our fabric. Um, and then, so that's on the actual geometry, this part. Okay, and on the primitives of the constraint geometry, you can see we got yeah. So all of anything related to the constraints, right? So compression stiffness, we got a rest length, bend stiffness again. We got a type. We got two types here. We got distance and bend as well. Okay, so distance is trying to stop the polygons from um, collapsing in on themselves. And then bend will try to stop them bending in this direction. Okay, we drop a null, we can take a closer look at them. So they're, they're just the constraints and they're just um, primitives, right? You could build these, you don't have to use these nodes, although they're very convenient. You can just build them up in with any typical Houdini SOP tools. And uh, as long as they've got all the correct attributes on there, they'll work fine. Okay, so let's drop a Vellum uh, solver uh, learn solver oh not struts try again learn solver connect that up 
okay and give it something to collide with as well let's just drop a torus connect that up to the right input that will filter through into our solver okay so this is just kind of a packed up hda so if you jump inside uh, if you jump inside here you can connect up forces is kind of a shortcut you can see we've gone right inside into the dop network but inside we've just got a dop network and it's all kind of packed up with all these handy easy um, um, tools for you so then if we just drop down this torus a little bit okay and then let's see how that works we just hit play so it looks okay we've got you know this is colliding but then right away we can see here at the side we've got these things which look like they've been glued okay which we didn't choose to do that so if we look at look at this triangle now closely when i go back you can see the triangle disappears right and then if i hit point view you can see there's a point there so there's a primitive folded in there and that's because of this remesh hasn't been able to um configure this correctly right so one thing so what's happening here if we take a look at this vellum cloth at the top the mass is calculating um, varying based on the area of the polygon and this polygon has basically no area so its density is, is zero okay and when the density is zero it can't move okay that's how we set up pins when you try to pin hold up something straight it just gives it zero mass okay so it's uh yeah whenever you see weird stuff like this then um, be careful of things like that all right so a couple of ways to resolve that um the way the way i wouldn't normally do it would be you could set this to uniform and now everything is will have a mass of 0.1 so let's watch that get off this point view and then hopefully yeah the whole thing should fall okay or if i set this back to calculate varying which is better for you know it'll kind of take care of your geometry and if you change the um the quantity of polygons it won't matter too much another thing you can do is on the remesh just turn up the iterations i just push it all the way up to 10 because it doesn't take long and that should give us some cleaner uh, geometry and there it works fine okay um what else can we do we could look at um well as i said pinning so if you wanted to stop any parts of the geometry from moving we can quickly just make a selection in the viewport like this just enter and now these will have those points will have a mass of zero i won't move okay we could uh, let me get rid of that let's add in some other geometry with this let's see let's drop the uh, rubber toy Okay, if I just oops, visualize that, we could do something different with this. As it's three-dimensional, we could, I'll just move it up one. Let's give this a group. Go toy, to toy, and make sure we have a group over here as well. Call this cloth. Okay, and then I can select cloth here so that we're only, you know, we're not, I don't want to generate cloth on here as well. Well, I do, but um, in a different way. Okay, and then I'm going to type, let's see, vellum, conf, let's do something different. We could configure strut soft body. Let's do that. So I'll just connect it directly to the toy for now, but I will put it in line here in a moment so we can see so we've got two things going on here we've got a cloth just like before just doing the same thing that's giving us the distance constraints um which we can set the which are here the stretch constraints which are distance constraints and bend constraints two different constraints there and then also here we're looking at struts so if we take a null to just look at the constraints you can see if I get rid of the cloth constraints, you can see we've got these kind of lines, these struts jumping across, which will stop the um, the object from collapsing in on itself. It kind of simulates a soft body. 
Okay. Now if I set both of these to toy, this one and oh not pin the group to toy. Okay, and then I can drop these in here. Get a nice clean workflow. And then that should all work together. Let's see. Get rid of this template. And you can see that kind of bouncing there. We need some more uh, sub steps just to improve this collision. But not too worried about that right now. So you can see that's kind of holding its shape a little bit there. Cool, right? And then let's see what else. We could add some lines to this and kind of strings. So if I just drop a line. Let's template the cloth. Look at the line. Let's make it a bit longer. Three and give it some more points. Ten or twenty. And where shall I place it? Maybe let's do do that. Let's do. No, I'll just have the one. Okay. Group that. Just to give it a name, oops, line, merge that in with the rest of my geometry. I'm doing all this to demonstrate that it, you know, the versatility of, of vellum, you know, we're doing all this together and one, there's only one solver here, which would be problematic in the past, you know, trying to mix different solvers together. But here we're just using one. Um, and then let's see, we're going to use again vellum, configure. Well, let's just drop a vellum constraint. All of these really are the same. They're just changing the constraint type option at the top here. Okay. So here I want string, which is here. And then I'm going to find my group. Not toy, but line. If I just changed one that I already had. Ah, uh, yeah. My bad. I'm going to go back. Don't want that on string. I want that on cloth for my toy. Here, change this one to string. Change that. Find the line here. Cool. And let's also do a another vellum constraint. And let's do a glue. We can use glue to attach two different vellum objects together. Okay, you can see it's even doing that just already because I don't have any groups. Um, but it can also be specific and connect the cloth to the line. In case these are closer together. Let's watch that. Oh, and also what I want to do with my line is pin the top. Point. Obviously, you could do, make that more procedural with a with a um, a group or something. Cool. And one more thing. Let's let's animate this line. So if I <coughs> excuse me, animate this line here. Okay. Let's just drop a uh, keyframe on the first, and then move to one second. I don't know, to 10 units away. It's not very far. Okay, and then when we come to this point here, so this is pinned, and you can see we've got pin to animation. If I check match animation, then that will move. Only this point will move, the rest will be simulated with the animation. I'm just going to Give me a, a few more sub steps. You can see so that the top point is following the original animation up there, but the rest is being simulated. These are being held together. This cloth getting pulled away, which is reacting with the soft body. All these different types of constraints um, working together and without too much trouble, you know. And in here we haven't spoken about, um, let's see if we come to the vellum, where are you? 
yeah tool you can see tetrahedrals which we're going to be using we haven't spoken about that yet which is another way of doing soft bodies uh, grains we haven't spoken about either we haven't well the string hair is basically a string you know okay so I just wanted to show you the the versatility of um of vellum there okay so we'll keep that just to one side so you've got some basic stuff altogether and, and next we'll move on to our to our project